Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and today once again we're working with our knit bodice block within the series so that way you can make your designs, your dreams of pattern making and dress making come to life. And if you haven't seen the first welcome video to the series, I will leave that in the info box below as well as any necessary information you will find in the info box below as well. Now the first welcome video will guide you through the tools that you will need, what we will cover in the series, what to expect and of course any additional videos and tutorials that you will need. Now this knit bodice block we made a couple of months ago and that's what we're going to be working with. Now it's really important to understand what kind of bodice block you're working with. The bodice block that we're going to be working today and throughout the series is a fitted knit garment. Therefore it fits really close to your body. In some cases you might even find that you have some negative ease in this knit bodice block. So that is going to be our starting point. Now this is our goal for today and you can clearly see the difference between the garment that we're going to make at the end of this video and the original knit bodice block from which we made a t-shirt which basically is the knit bodice block. So you can clearly see the difference. So these are the steps that we're going to do throughout this tutorial. So we're going to take the original knit bodice block and we're going to add some extra ease within the body which will also shift the shoulder line a little bit lower and that will create extra room and also ease of wear. We will also make the sleeve a little bit wider again for that particular purpose. We'll also lower the armhole again because we want a roomier sweatshirt or a sweater. I will also go ahead and extend the length of mine just because this is the way I would like my pattern to be. However, of course, you can do whatever you would like. Again, this is the way that I modify my bodice blocks and I truly hope that you find this approach very easy, very understandable. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now the first step for us would be to actually take your back pattern piece and go ahead and copy this back pattern piece of your knit bodice block onto a new piece of paper. Now once you have done with copying the outlines of the pattern, let's go ahead and copy these lines as well. That will help us in the future if we want to add some extra ease somewhere so that way we know what are we doing and in what places are we doing that. Right over here on the shoulder, okay, and it doesn't have to be precise, approximately. Find a middle, right, a center point, approximately, like that. And now we're going to draw a straight perpendicular line from that point all the way to the hemline. All right, now that this is done, let's go ahead and cut this pattern in two pieces on this red line that we marked earlier in the middle of our shoulder line. All right, that is done. The next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to open up this pattern by one inch. So I have the mat underneath, you don't have to have it, you can use just a ruler, but each one of these little squares is one inch by one inch. So I know that all I have to do is I have to align the pattern with those squares and now it is one inch apart. The next thing that I need to do is to grab some painter's tape or some washi tape and place a few pieces of tape so that way it actually holds the pattern together like that. Now, you don't actually have to cut it apart and tape it together. You can use paper shifting method as well that saves paper and all of this. However, I truly think that this method serves as a really good visual guide, especially when you're doing something like this for the first time and, and it's less confusing. So that's the reason I'm doing that. So once we have completed that, it's really important to understand that we gave ourselves one inch of ease on the quarter of the pattern, right? So because we have four pattern pieces, this is one cut on a fold, two plus two for the front. Four inches of ease is really easy to establish to kind of see what that is. Take your measuring tape, measure your full bust circumference, and then add four inches to it, and then you'll be able to see how much ease approximately you're going to have in your garment with four inches of ease added. All right, our next step is going to be to outline everything except for the armhole and this little bit over here that leads up to the armhole. So let's go ahead and get that done. While we're doing the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and add, let's say, how much can I add here? It seems like I have about four inches. Yeah, let's go ahead and add 
four inches right over here to the length of the actual garment. Now I've just made a straight line. We're going to complete the side seam here in a second. So just go ahead and leave it as a straight line for right now. Now here, as you can see, it does not align as a straight line. That's all right. You can lift it up by about, uh, I would say this is like a quarter of an inch, maybe one eighth of an inch. So that's totally fine. As long as it forms a really nice straight line, we should be all good. Now here, we're actually going to drop the armhole by one inch. So let's measure one inch right over here. And this is where our actual new armhole is going to end. All right, let's go ahead and remove this pattern piece. Now, let's talk about the side seam real quick before we move forward to the armhole. Now, the original side seam is slightly curved towards the hip. However, we also expanded the pattern in the width by one inch. So really, this little bit for the hip is not really necessary because our pattern is wide enough already in my case. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a straight side seam from here to here. Now, if you don't want your side seam to be super straight, then what you can do is you can take your pattern piece that we were working with, you can find where you had your waistline, which was right over here. And because our waist usually is the smallest of the measurements between your bust, your waist and hips, I say usually because obviously we're all different. If that's your case, you can take maybe half an inch right over here and then we can connect the bottom hem with this new point and then curve it in really nicely so that way it forms a beautiful side seam. There we go, this is going to be our new side seam. Let's go ahead and outline the hem as well so that way it forms the side seam and the bottom hem. That is great, this is done. And here we can curve it in a little bit like that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the armhole. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a straight perpendicular line from the bottom of the armhole all the way to the center back. And then we're also going to draw a straight perpendicular line from the edge of the shoulder all the way to this line that we just drafted. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and find the middle of this line, approximately, right over here. Take a quarter of an, of an inch towards the inside right over here. And now we need to connect this point, this point, and this point. If you have a French curve, you can do that. If not, you can do it by hand. So you can just connect it with straight lines first, just to give yourself some guidance of what we're actually doing. Let's go ahead and outline that in red. There we go. Now to do a quick recap, we did extend the width of the pattern by one inch. We lowered the armhole and here you can see the old hem and the new extension of the hem as well. All right, let's go ahead and grab a new piece of pattern paper and we're going to copy this pattern onto a new piece of pattern paper and we're going to create the front pattern piece. Now here I have my back pattern piece underneath and before we move forward, here's a quick little thing to mention. You might have done a full bust adjustment for your knit pattern piece, which might have raised your front pattern piece up by about an inch at the side seam right over here at the bottom of the armhole, meaning that your front pattern piece is actually longer at the side seam than your back pattern piece in order to accommodate the extra room at the bust. Now I have not done a full bust adjustment for my knit bodice block because I have no need for that. However, if you have done the full bust adjustment, here are two things that you can do. Number one, you can either follow along this tutorial 
with the full bust adjustment however this is quite a roomy pattern again we added four inches of ease all together to the width of our garment therefore if you want you can do a test garment where you do the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece equal at the side seam so that way you can see if that is going to accommodate your bust without doing a full bust adjustment on this pattern as well so i just wanted to mention that now here we have our front pattern piece sort of copied over here and we have to raise this high point shoulder by about half an inch. So let's go ahead and raise this by half an inch right over here. And now we need to draw a new shoulder seam. Now the shoulder seam on the back pattern piece is uh, a little bit over four and a half inches. And that is the same length that we need to make sure that our front shoulder seam is at as well. So now if you can see my front shoulder seam over here, it ends just a tiny bit, about a quarter of an inch before the back pattern piece. And that's all right because the front of our body is usually not as wide as the back. Here we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did for the back pattern piece. We're going to drop a straight line, straight perpendicular line down we are going to find approximately the middle of that. Instead of taking a quarter of an inch, you can take half an inch right over here. And now we're going to connect this point, this point, and this point. Again, just to make it a little bit easier, we are going to do a straight line over here. Fantastic. Now, before I move forward and outline this in red, here's one thing that I would like to do. I would like to measure the armhole of the back pattern piece. Go ahead and put your measuring tape on the rib and let's measure this really nicely. So this is eight and three quarters. And let's take a look at the front armhole. This is nine and one quarter as of this very moment. So I would like for it to be closer to the length of the back armhole. So what we can do over here, we can actually drop it by a little bit on this side. So let's say about um, let's say about a quarter of an inch. We can drop it over here. There we go. New shoulder line. I'm actually going to bring this about a quarter of an inch up. I could drop this by another uh, quarter of an inch, but I don't necessarily want to do that. You can if you would like to. So I'm going to bring this up by a quarter of an inch. And this is going to be really easy to ease this in into the back side seam. And now we're going to outline the new armhole. So you see all the changes that we made for the front armhole. Now all you can do over here is you need to copy the front neckline, the depth of it and the curve of it and go ahead and outline everything else and we're ready to cut the front pattern piece out as well. Now here we have the back and the front before we move forward on drafting a sleeve. Let's go ahead and do what we usually do is we're going to put them shoulder seam to shoulder seam to double check that the shoulder seams indeed match. We also want to make sure that this bit right over here is nice and smooth. There's no uh, pucker, there's no sharp corner, there's no dip over here so that way it's nice and smooth. We also want to put it side seam to side seam. We know that the front pattern piece is going to be a quarter of an inch longer than the front. That's all right. We want to make sure that this forms a really nice curve right over here. Now, another way how you can deal with this quarter of an inch is you can actually take this quarter of an inch away on the bottom 
for example, like so, and then you can curve it in towards the front like that. So you can do both ways. You can either ease this quarter of an inch into the side seam of the back pattern piece, or you can take it away on the bottom and curve it in towards the center front. So that center front stays the line that we need, but the side seam is going to be a quarter of an inch shorter, whichever way you prefer. Now let's go ahead and draft the sleeve. Now from this point all the way to this point is going to be the length of our sleeve. Now you can go ahead and take the original sleeve that we drafted in our knit bodice block tutorial and take the length that you took there as well. Now this is a short sleeve that I did for my knit bodice block but in the tutorial we also draft a long sleeve so you can go ahead and do that. On the bottom on one side this is going to be the circumference of your wrist plus a little bit of ease, let's say half an inch on each side. So this will be half over here and half over here equally divided. Now let's go ahead and do the drafting of the sleeve cap and then we're going to be almost done. So the first thing that we need to determine is the cap height over here. The easiest way to go about it is to take one third of your back armhole length plus your front armhole length and divide it in three and take one third and that one third is going to be a cap height. Usually you can add about a quarter of an inch or half an inch of ease to it and use that as your cap height right over here. So to make it really visual you're going to measure this part and this part, you're going to sum them together, divide it by three, and one third of the sum of these two, the front and the back armhole, you're going to use right over here, plus one quarter or about half an inch of these, depending on the fit of the sleeve. All right, I have marked this point right over here. Now for the width of the sleeve, go ahead and take your original sleeve and let's measure the width of your original sleeve. Now for me, that was 12 inches. However, remember we also added one inch of the width into the pattern, meaning that here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one inch to one side and one inch to another side as well. And that is going to be the width of my sleeve. And if let's say that does not work I can always adapt and adjust it but for now let's go ahead and take that as a starting point. All right now that that is done let's go ahead and connect these two points on each side to create these triangles. Then let's go ahead and like the original tutorial divide them in half then in half again. All right so here and here we're gonna take a quarter of an inch down. So this is quarter of an inch down And this is going to be a quarter of an inch down. And here and here, we're gonna take a quarter of an inch up as well. If needed, we can shave off a little bit from here later. We're going to see how the sleeve comes together. All right, so here I don't necessarily like how this cap is coming along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it by let's say half an inch, right over here. So I like this a lot better. And then what we can actually do is determine which one is going to be the back, which one is going to be the front, and we can actually place this right over here. And usually to this point right over here, this curve on the actual bodice matches the curve on the sleeve. So this is going to be front, and this is going to be the back. And now you will see the difference once I outline this in red. There we go. So here you see we took a bit more in here, it's a little bit less. So this is kind of like quick and easy, <laughs> dirty way of drafting the sleeve, but it also works. Now you can follow the original method, you can follow any method that you have, but this is just quick and easy. So right now, let's take measuring tape and let's double check. Now we want the whole sleeve to measure about half an inch larger than both of the armholes together. So for me, that's half an inch. So let's go ahead and double check. 
Now this is actually perfect. All right, and the last step for drafting the sleeve would be to connect these two points from here all the way to here to create the sleeve seam. All right, now once the sleeve is done, let's go ahead and mark the direction of the stretch, which is going to go this way. And let's go ahead and cut these pieces out and then we can actually cut the fabric as well. Now the three pattern pieces are done. Here the last thing that I would like to address is the neckline. If you want your neckline to be a little bit wider because it is a sweatshirt, what you need to do is to take even amount from each point of the neckline and then redraw the neckline. So let's say you want your neckline to be half an inch wider. So what you do is you take half an inch all the way around like that. And once that is done, you're going to do exactly the same steps for the back neckline. If you don't want your back neckline to be wider, but we still need to make sure that the length of the shoulder seam of the front pattern piece matches the length of the shoulder seam of the back pattern piece, what you can do is measure this, mark half an inch, from the edge over here. And instead of marking half an inch all the way around, you can just redraw the neckline like so, where you're making it wider only at one point at the shoulder right over here, but you're not necessarily making it deeper all the way around. As always, my dear sewing friends, don't forget to add seam allowances when you're cutting your pattern pieces and finish this sweater using techniques of your choice. You can even make it into a V-neck or turtleneck. Now check out this tutorial you see on your screen to see how to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Be creative, be thoughtful, and I will see you soon next Sunday. Bye.